I wondered what sort of themes do you like to invest? Do you have a sweet spot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. So I've been at KP for the last seven and a half years and started on the digital side of the world on mobile and consumer internet uh, companies. But over the last five years, I've really focused on green tech. Um, I work with companies okay. like Fisker Automotive. Um, I work on a geothermal company, Alta Rock, Recycle mm -hmm. Bank, which is a consumer-facing rewards and loyalty company. So it's it's quite diverse. Um, right now, specifically, I'm focused on uh, some, uh, they call it demand-side green tech opportunities, which is really about conservation of energy and using uh, wow. smart systems to reduce energy use. So I'm focused on things like next generation lighting, um, smart grid applications. So, Fantastic. Um, well, I'm a Tibetan Buddhist and we would say that's right livelihood. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying it. It's oh, a lot of fun. Fantastic. Yeah, saving the environment. So what do you look for in women entrepreneurs and startups that indicate interest to you in investing in their businesses? Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I guess I'd rephrase the question a little bit. Sure. In, in, it, you, you say women entrepreneurs, and I yeah. think, you know, I don't look at an entrepreneur as a man or a woman. It's it's That's really great. just an entrepreneur. That's great. And so what we look for in an entrepreneur is really the, first of all, that they're focused on a, a large opportunity, a large market that's mm -hmm. been underserved. Okay. Um, and so once they sort of pass through that filter and we agree that they're focused on what we think is the next big thing, right. then it's really about do they have, are they focused on an approach that is somehow um, differentiated, and difficult to copy. Uh, well, oftentimes we'll say an order of magnitude, you know, technology sort of differentiation. Um, and so if that combination is there of great market focus, a really, you know, fascinating new technology or different approach, and, and also a very strong team, a team that's capable okay. of um, of actually, um, you know, uh, working towards that goal, um, that's what gets us excited about it. Fantastic. And is there anything in particular that you would look for um, as, a, as from it, your own side? Well, there's, you know, I guess there's a lot of pattern recognition as you see people who come in, and I think there's yeah. a lot of cues you take from the entrepreneur. You want to see a real passion for what they're doing. Okay. You know, it's a lot of people can go make money, but in our business and what we do, you you know, startups oh. are uh, yeah. difficult and yes. they're highly emotional, yes. a lot goes wrong. And so yes. you need someone who's motivated by far more than just a paycheck. It's really their passion, their mission in life right. to make what they're doing successful. So you need to see the spark of that yes. um, in the entrepreneur. Yes, great, okay. Um, advice for pitching, um, is often correlated with dating. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I've heard that, but... <laughs> yeah. um, sometimes it is. Um, and I was just talking to Jason Mendelson, and uh -huh. um, he said I was the only other person that had ever said that because he actually teaches that in... Um, his um, That's funny. class, yeah, yeah, um, and he says that the law students are always like shocked when he when he equates <laughs> dating and uh, venture. It, it is funny. I, I can't say I've ever thought about it that uh -huh. way, but it is a lot like you know when you're hiring a person yeah. that you're going to work really closely with. Yeah. This yeah. is a relationship where you do need to have the right rapport. You have to respect each other, and you have mm. to be aligned on what mm. your expectations are. Mm. So I think one of the things that we make sure we do as you know potential investors in a company are to make sure that the vision that the entrepreneur has for where they want to take their company mm -hmm. is fairly well aligned with where we want to take it. Because, you know, as investors, and we don't control companies, we don't run companies, yes. we, um, you know, manage by influence. Um, we're on boards and we strongly suggest and may lay out certain cases for why we want to make one decision or another. Yes. Um, and so we need to make sure that there's that a, a relationship that can be built on trust um, and so the fundamentals need to be there for that but you know um, we also tell our entrepreneurs that they should do their diligence on their investors I think a lot of times um, entrepreneurs fail to take that step and it's really important because once you have an investor um, they can be hard to get rid of <laughs> yes. so yes. you know you're with them for a very very long time yes. and they need to ride through the ups and downs of the company yes. and so it's good for, um, for entrepreneurs to, to understand you know, what their investor is like in difficult times when yes. things aren't uh, always going well. And, and that's a really good point. Um, and how, how would you suggest um, an entrepreneur find out that information? Talk um, to other companies that that great. investor has worked with. Great. Um, you know, great. often proactively I'll say to a potential new company, you, know, you should go talk to other yes. CEOs that I've worked with. Yes. Um, it's, it's, just, it's a really good thing to do and you'll, yes. they'll get a sense for how involved is, Brilliant. you know, Trey is a board member, um, what's she like, you yes. know, when, 
you know, the company's not going in the right direction, is yes. she helpful or too critical? Um, you know, it's it's important to know how people act in tough situations. Yes, I agree. That's fantastic advice. Thank you. Um, in your experience, are there many women entrepreneurs that are unsuccessful in sourcing venture? We already know that the percentages of women who are successful are very low, and I think that's about 8 to 10 percent of women actually achieve funding. Yeah, and again, I'd probably change the question a little bit, because yes. I, I don't know the, you know the percentages of success. Yes. Um, I do know that when you look at a portfolio um, that you know the number of women entrepreneurs in the portfolio is low and I, okay. I would say I don't think it's because women get funded at a lesser rate than men I think okay. the problem is the funnel um, okay. and so you know it's um, you know and the funnel starts earlier it's uh, it's we need more women studying engineering and science you know who then go yes. work in startup companies who then get inspired to go start companies and yes. so um, you know, again, I don't think it's something structurally about uh, about women getting venture. I think it's just we don't have enough, you know, technical women out there who want to go start companies. Yes, I interviewed Telly Whitney, who's the CEO of Anita Borg, mm -hmm. on Friday, and she was saying the same thing. Like yeah. we're really trying to encourage uh, women to become technical. Yeah, and so in, in, at least in the venture world. Um, you know, while not all companies are based on high technology, it helps to have studied, you know, some element of technology or engineering to understand how things are made and that thought process for yes. solving problems is yes. really important. And yes. I think if you look at a lot of venture folks actually come from, you know, have been engineers and have started companies. And so it is, it's viewed as, as very important. And personally, I find it quite helpful when you're helping a company through a problem. You know, I've yes. been there, I've done that, I've yes. solved kind of those types of problems before. Brilliant, brilliant. That's fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> what can women entrepreneurs or startups do to increase their chances in sourcing venture? Um, as we both recognize that the numbers are low. Mm -hmm. Do you have any overview or ideas from your own side about how you think, apart from the fact that more women need to become technical? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, focusing on how do you increase your odds of getting venture funding. Um, you know, I think it's important when you're pulling together your pitch um, and getting ready to go out and try and raise money that you uh, I think ask a lot of people for advice. Uh, it's some of the best entrepreneurs I work with are always seeking out feedback. Um, and so writing your business plan and then immediately going to a venture capitalist to pitch it is probably not the best idea. Mm -hmm. You should write your plan and then bounce it off of all the smart people you know. Yes. Actively seek out you know, the smartest people in the area that you're trying to build your business in and get their feedback. And, you know, those iteration cycles will make it a lot better. So that by the time you go to, a, you know, raise some venture capital money from, you know, their seed person or a VC, yes. you've been asked all those hard questions and you're not caught off guard and, and you know, you're better prepared. And so... More comfortable, I would imagine. Right. And so I think really going through that process um, is one of the best things you can do. Mm, that's great advice. <clears throat> what sort of challenges do women face if they become a venture capitalist? And obviously, <laughs> you could tell me, but just about the ones that you've faced. And I know that uh, Klein and Perkins is a very different type of firm um, in the sense that they have so many women partners. Yeah, and again, I'll say, you know, it's it's. I think it's the same challenges that men face. Okay. Um, and so, you know, speaking generally, some of the big and I came before KP. I actually co-founded a company, so my previous experience was at a startup. Okay. Um, and I think the biggest difference in going from a company into venture is. Um, of what we were talking about earlier is just the, the multitasking aspect. <laughs> you know, in, in a company, you're sort of singularly focused on a company mission and a you know a plan. There's a budget and there's a schedule and there's a company mission. Um, and in a partnership and in venture, um, it's a lot more amorphous. There are a lot of things going on mm -hmm. there. You know, it's sort of up to you to figure out how you're going to focus your time, where you're going to focus your mm -hmm. time. So one of the things I always talk about is sort of you know, ruthless prioritization of, yes. of what I'm doing. Because um, yes. at any one time, I could be, you know, working on eight different portfolio companies and three different new initiatives. And, you know, and I don't want to let any of my companies down. So you got to yes. figure out a way to add value to all of those eight companies and yet find time to look at these new initiatives. And so a lot of it is, 
um, becoming really rigorous around how, how do I evaluate new opportunities, learn mm -hmm. to say no quickly, yes. um, and uh, you know, figure out ways to be more efficient with your time. Uh, extreme it, time management. Right, extreme time management, <laughs> exactly. So you know, the art of multitasking is something that you sort of learn to hone, uh, and you know, something I, I'm continuously working on uh, yes. getting better and more efficient about that. Yes. But, um, you know, you've got to be able to switch gears a lot. You have to. You can sometimes you're going to be down in the weeds in a business plan. Um, the next, you have to sort of back up and look strategically more broadly. So, you know, it's what I like about the job is it is quite versatile. You, know, you get to and do a lot of things, and I get yeah. to go from you know uh, electric vehicles with Fisker to mm -hmm. you know green rewards and loyalty with yes. Recycle Bank. Yes. Um, uh, you know, the other thing that's interesting about this job is that yes. it, it's very much a people-facing job. Mm. So and I like that mm. part about my job, mm. but you're also not um, your uh, it's people facing, but it's you're not in direct control of teams or managing teams. So I think I hinted at this earlier. Mm. Um, it's all, it's management by influence. So if you're working with a board, you know I'm not ever making company decisions. I'm helping influence company decisions, and so it's a whole different sort of management or art to. Um, being persuasive or compelling um, around um, important decisions. I'm never going to ultimately be making the decision, yes. but I have to put up a good argument to help someone else, the CEO of a company, make it. So it's decision. a different kind of responsibility mm -hmm. and a different skill set um, yep. that you've obviously developed. And right. um, you're obviously good at it because <laughs> <laughs> there you are with all those companies. Um, what needs to happen, do you think, for venture companies to employ more women venture capitalists? I, this comes back to the funnel mm. point that I had, that I mm. said earlier. I think a lot mm. of venture folks are engineers. You know, I have a bachelor's and a master's in mechanical engineering. I um, I co-founded a company, so I'm also an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I'd love to see more women in venture, but a lot of people in venture come from being entrepreneurs and being engineers, and so. You know, we need to increase the funnel of women okay. who are studying engineering um, okay. and, and those sorts of things.